Welcome to season three of You're Not Alone with Townsend. My name is Townsend, and if you've followed my journey, you know that I'm not only a musician, but I'm also a mental health advocate. I use my platform to help spread awareness, love, build community, and simply help people feel less alone in their struggles. In the last couple of years, I've had the chance to interview people from all over the world about a huge variety of mental health topics, and I cannot thank each of you enough for helping us continue to shine a light on the world. Every other week this season, we're bringing you the best interviews we've had. Make sure to like and follow this podcast if you're enjoying it. And if you want to keep up with everything we've got going, follow us on socials at Townsend T Music. Hope you enjoy. What is up, everybody? Welcome to You're Not Alone with Townsend. We're already on season three. I am so excited. We've got such great guests today. I literally say that every week, but it's just so true. These guys amaze me. I go out looking for some amazing stories, and it seems like they just find me. So this is Ryan and Luann Babbler. Now, today we're going to be talking about a diagnosis called RCDP, but I'll get more into that as we get into the podcast. But first, I want to let you guys introduce yourself. So who the heck are Ryan? and Luann. Who is Leo for the people that are listening and are like, who are these people? I'm Luann. This is Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Good to know. Uh, Good to know. Albert <laughs> behind us. Uh, and yeah, we had a little boy named Leo. I don't even know where to begin with how amazing of a little human he was. And he passed away earlier or coming up on two years ago, which is just mind boggling. Um, we're currently located in on Whidbey Island, about uh, two hours northwest of Seattle. And we came from uh, Colorado, uh, I guess, yeah, two years ago after Leo passed away. So yeah, we, we are adventuring and trying to uh, find our way uh, you know, forward now after, after losing Leo. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We talked about before we hopped on here. So I'm from Arkansas and they are from the Washington area. And we decided we're going to come visit each other because they're both beautiful right. and we need to go visit a little bit more. So something that I loved about your story, and like I said, we'll get into this diagnosis a little bit later, but you took Leo and literally lived your best life. And it was so cool to see and so inspiring to see. And I think it's important to talk about Colorado in Washington and Arkansas and these trails and being outdoors because that was something that Leo loved and you guys like were sure to spend his days doing what he loved. I think that is so cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, because we are from Wisconsin originally. Okay. That's where we both grew up and uh, lived there with Leo his first five years of life. And he loves being loved being outside and it kind of turned into one of these things where we were you know, doing all the things that we could, I'm not going to lie. I really didn't enjoy it. The <laughs> winters but I got like tougher and tougher on both of us. Um, and yeah, just being drawn to Colorado had all of the things that we wanted, lots and lots of trails, lots and lots of opportunities to be outside all year round. Um, and then like the holistic healing opportunities and stuff there too was a big draw for there. And yeah, it became our home. Uh, okay. Colorado just still has our heart. We had to uh, dip out of there after the just absolute grief, grief stricken sadness that surrounded us in all the places that we love to be as a family. And uh, so now we're in Washington. I can only imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Colorado is beautiful, but I would imagine spending those times with Leo and then trying to spend them without him is pretty, pretty griefful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, his favorite spots were our favorite spots. Yeah. And so we both worked remote. So we would get up in the mornings and hike and we would work and we'd go out and hike again and we'd go for sunset and picnics. And so after he passed away, you know, you're surrounded by those things that you poured yourselves into like every day being out there. And it, and it was just to the point where we knew that we had to get away to hopefully come back one day because it is our home and it's where, um, what's where he was and where he was the most happy. So, um, that was, that was really the thought of, of, of having to go away and try to do some new things, some new trails. Luann will tell you that 
one of his favorite things was new trails. Like he loved being on different trails, loved seeing different things. And so we're trying to do that out here without him, but uh, you know, he, he hasn't been on these trails. So we're trying to bring him along, um, you know, in this process as well. So. I, I love it. So I actually have several podcast episodes with counselors and therapists talking about the grieving process. And I think this is so important for, for, for listeners. Like this is true and gritty and this is how grieving is. And I know for me, I went through a traumatic event where I lost a best friend and I do music full time. And I had to step back from that because it was just not the same without that person there that made it amazing to begin with. But a little hope for you guys. It took me a little time and it took a lot of building and remolding myself, but I was able to get back into music and it was almost like a different fire lit under me and much more passion and purpose. I have no doubt that you guys will find that as well. That's super inspiring. Yeah. And I yeah. love hearing that. Oh, I, it, Selfishly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, go back and listen to the grief episodes. They're amazing. But the biggest thing we talk about, and I'm sure you guys have heard this a million times, but grieving is not linear, right? I mean, mine happened several years ago and I still have moments where I'm not okay. And I think the whole point of this podcast is to talk about it's okay to not be okay, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're not. No. Yeah, right. We don't pretend that. to be. <laughs> <laughs> I love the honesty. I mean, I love the honesty. Okay. I feel like we've made people be like, okay, what are we even talking about? So let's hop into what was Leo's official diagnosis. And just for fun, I want to say I Googled this and I feel okay. like it's a huge tongue twister. Yeah. You, so try wanna, you want me to try? Okay. Let me try. Here we go. This is my, this is, I did not hear it. I just read it. Let's okay. say rhizomelic chondro chondrodysplasia punctata. Pretty, yeah, pretty close. Rhizomelic chondrodysplasia punctata. I was super close. I'm really yeah. proud of myself. Yeah. Okay, so what the heck is that other than like 77 consonants? Are you enjoying this conversation? This project is funded by patrons and sponsors. So if you like what you hear and you'd like to help us continue changing lives in 2024, we would love to have you join the family. Reach out to us at townsandteamusic at hotmail.com if you'd like to be a sponsor or hop on patreon.com slash townsandteamusic to join the patron family. As a thank you, you're going to receive extra podcast questions and content every episode, discounts, exclusive content, and so much more. So join the family and let's continue changing lives. Yeah, um, so... Rhizomelic chondrodysplasia punctata, or RCDP, um, is a really rare and terminal form of dwarfism. Um, at the time he was born, there was less than 100 known cases worldwide. There's a long list of um, respiratory issues, neurological issues. Most of them have seizures, and they um, their arms are, they have uh, contractures. contractures of the arms, so their arms are, are very little, their legs are usually crossed. Um, Leo had, and, and most of them do, cataracts. So at birth, he had his lenses removed and he wore contacts for his whole uh, life as well. So, you know, you, you saw the, the, the story online, you know, perpetual infant, um, you know, he was, uh, was he 15 pounds, mm -hmm. uh, 16 pounds for, you know, most of his life. So uh, we carried him everywhere. That's how we really got into the outside and the hiking and all that is he loved to be carried so he could see, you know, the world. Um, but yeah, so it, it, like I said, it, it's a terminal form. Uh, the, the kids are given, you know, two to five years, five um, is on the very high end. Mm -hmm. And Leo lived uh, to seven and a half years old. So what a and fire. he was healthy during the, all that time too. Like we were told when he was born that expect a whole bunch of time in the hospitals. So getting sick, like a, a cold or the flu for like us isn't near as big of a deal for someone who has his condition. And so, um, yeah, so keeping him healthy was always our main objective, like keeping, keeping him as healthy as possible. So we didn't, could hopefully prevent keeping him out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So you get this brand new baby and they're like, ah, uh, by the way, prognosis is not so good. Like yeah. what a bubble burst. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, um, you know, the pregnancy and I can, you know, 
jump in obviously, yeah. but yeah. we're totally normal. Uh, you know, at all measurements were normal. Pregnancy was normal. The birth was normal. Uh, they didn't know. And we didn't know until he was born and he came out with his arms and legs crossed. Um, and so then, then he was taken to St. Paul, Minnesota, head of children's uh, NICU, where he stayed for a month. And, and they kind of, once we got up there, they, they had an idea that like, when the geneticist came in that, you know, they had a little bit of an idea, but they didn't know. And so it took, I think, days, a couple of mm -hmm. weeks to have some blood work returned to actually give the diagnosis. So they had never had, you know, a baby with that at, at St. Paul Children's. Uh, so we had never heard of it right. um, before he was born as well. So. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my next question was, had you ever heard of it? Which I would assume not. It's so rare. I read somewhere where now, a few years after you guys you know, have gone through all of this, they can tell while you're pregnant. Is that correct? You know, I think there's, you know, there's tests you can do for, for that. Like I said, he never, there was no measurements that were True. off ever. And so I think a lot of time with like achondrodysplasia, like dwarfism, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some discrepancies in like the head size and some of the limb size. And uh, we never had any of that. So um, there maybe would have been one of the things of, um, you know, during pregnancy that they said, like maybe, dwarfism or achondrodysplasia, and they could have maybe done a test to, to determine that he had RCDP, but we didn't have a clue at all. I'm so glad that we didn't know, honestly, like that was like such an amazing gift to not be inundated with all of this information during, like, I probably won't ever be pregnant ever again. So I got that experience and cared for Leo, just assuming that everything was fine, right? Yeah. yeah, I love that. Absolutely. And it's so cool to say, I'm really glad I didn't know before, right? Because we would have been on WebMD. And anytime I have a cold, I'm like, WebMD. And it's like, you're not going to make it past the night, you know? So I can't right? imagine if you were looking up this diagnosis and all the anxiety it would have given you before. But instead, yeah. it ended up being this beautiful story. Mm -hmm. So cool. So cool. Speaking of that, okay. Your whole story is that you made this huge decision to travel, just like leave where you were, hop in an RV and just go travel with Leo. Did people think you'd lost your marbles? Were they like, you guys lost it? Well, so so we sold our house in Wisconsin to move. And like we had a we had a nice house. Like we had a cute uh rambler. We had just built a uh like a three season porch on the back, like had all kinds of gardens and we grew up in the area. So like, like, so we were very, um, I don't know, invested in where we had always lived. And so leaving, selling that to move to a two bedroom apartment in a not like not a terrible place in Denver, but Probably not the most safe place in Denver. <laughs> Said might as well. Um, yeah. So it was kind of like, um, like people were just like, yeah, fairly, fairly surprised. But after we got out there, I feel like people maybe kind of started to understand a little bit more. We were actually at a routine MRI for Leo sitting outside on a park bench and Ryan's like, would you want to? build a camper van <laughs> and I was like sure Why so not yeah yeah so it was just kind of like one of those things where he had been considering it for a while like watching like there's all kinds of stuff on YouTube and and stuff like that when Leo was little like we spent a lot of time because he wasn't able to do a lot of that stuff outdoors and we spent a lot of time on like the travel channel and being yeah. like, this is our, like holding Leo being like, this is our travel. Like we're going to go along and do this. And so like, as we kind of like, as he grew up and we, you know, like moved out to Colorado, we had this like whole like vision of being able to like, if, if we can't go see people and do things with people, like how can we get out into the world, show him places, travel. And that's like, you know, how the camper van kind of, you know, I love that. You know, I'm so envious of people that live that life, like the camper van and you just travel and that's all you do. I'm like, listen, if y'all have an extra seat next time, let me know. I'm going to come with y'all. Okay. 
I love it. That is so cool. For people that haven't followed their channel, go follow them. The videos, they will make your day. Like they're going out, just to explain it to people, they're going out, they're hiking these beautiful trails. They're holding Leo because like he said, he's a perpetual baby. So even at seven years old, he's 15 pounds and they're just facing him out. And he has the biggest grin on his face. Like he is living life. And I think the coolest part of this for me was I feel like he was making y'all live life. Mm -hmm. Like hundred percent. Yeah. Like yeah. what are the chances y'all would have done that without Leo coming around? It's very unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. He made y'all make that leap, which is just so cool. So with that, is there anything you would change with how you spent your time with Leo? I mean, you literally changed your entire world, your work schedule. Is there anything you'd go back and change about that? Or are you like, no, that was perfect. Almost perfect. Like, like what can, first of all, what can we do to keep Leo healthy and what can we do to like give him the best life that we could, but then also for ourselves, you know, like we don't know how long he's going to be here. We don't know we know what they told us, but we like just kind of went with it. And the only thing that I do wish, and I don't know if this is even possible is that more people would have been able to meet him in person. Um, mm -hmm, we have, and like COVID played a big deal into that because we had to be, we were very, very, very careful. Um, he could not get COVID barely anybody got to hang out with Leo in person and that I wish more people could have. Like millions and millions of people know Leo though. Yeah. Now they do. (laughs) Yeah. So cool. Like this little guy has changed so many lives and he didn't even know it in his short (laughs) seven and a half years. So cool. But yeah, I think COVID, like I said, I hadn't even put two and two together that it was during COVID. So it wouldn't have mattered if he was perfectly healthy and didn't have a diagnosis, everybody was avoiding people at that time because we just didn't know is the unthinkable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. How cool. Okay. This is I had to ask this. What's your favorite memory of Leo? I love the videos y'all post. So I, I just yeah. I imagine you have a million of them, but what's one that just like pops out to you guys? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a million memories. Yeah. <laughs> um I think, you know, two for me, like um, one of the first camping trips we took was to Grand Tetons. Um, and so we had finished the van and we went out on our first like dispersed camping trip. So we um, drove up to Wyoming, found this spot that overlooked the mountains. And we spent uh, a couple days just all hanging out, you know, listening to music, um, hiking, visiting the national park. And like, it's one that was like, that was our first real like, camping trip away from home. I mean, um, for all the care and stuff that he needed and like special diet and stuff that he needed, like we packed all this stuff up into the van and like, we just went for it. And then, um, we all, we were huge into Halloween with him. And so we always dressed him up in like super cool, like costumes. And like one year we dressed him up as Chucky. And so like, (laughs) He had like all these like fake cuts and blood on him. And he had this little knife that he carried around and we took him hiking and we just met like all these people on the trails. And so like, you can imagine like, we're not in costume besides like we put these little like fake cuts on ourselves, like he had attacked us. But then you have Leo who's got like um, spray painted hair and he's holding a knife and like, you know, it's just like one of those things of like so much fun and just being super silly. Like he just loved like laughing and doing all that stuff and so like anything Halloween you know like he yeah, eats a bit so yeah. I imagine you holding him facing away and him just rolling his eyes when people walk by and being like my parents made me do this yeah. it, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was like the other way around but like he was like totally into it and like yeah it was I love it it was fun it was good times I saw the one where you painted him up as a lumberjack Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. He was Paul Bunyan one year. And awesome. yeah, that was that was a really good one too. That's so <laughs> funny. What's your favorite memory? Do you have one that pops out? I was I was thinking that you would ask something like this. So I've been kind of like trying to rack my brain a little bit. Yeah. But uh one of like given the time of year, so we 
So we've always worked from home since Leo was born. So like before it was like a thing, right? Yeah. Um, so we would do these work from home uh, Christmas parties. So like, you know, when you don't work from home, you have like the little like office Christmas party where like people do the potluck and like the secret Santa and like all of that stuff. And then also sometimes like an ugly Christmas sweater thing. So we started doing that. And um, when we moved to Colorado, we started incorporating going on a hike at the same time. Like that was like our evening activity. Like we would do like the little potluck thing and um, have like decorations and stuff and then go on our hike afterwards. And the one in the year, let's see, that would have been 2020. So the trailheads were a little bit less busy anyway. Uh, we showed up to one of our favorite trails in Boulder and there weren't like any other cars. It had just started snowing and it was like these big fat snowflakes and uh, just at the base of the flat irons and just, it was just so much fun. Like we were, he was in a really like fun, silly mood. He had this little uh, Patagonia. It kind of looked like, like what, like an elf would wear. And um, <laughs> so he had his like fleecy, bright green uh, Patagonia sweater on. And we had our like ugly Christmas sweaters on. That we is did awesome. And it was just, yeah, it was just like, magical magical oh man how yeah. cool too many to, too many to name <laughs> yeah absolutely so he pretty much beat the odds I mean the doctors were saying he's not going to live that terribly long and he ended up living seven and a half years mm -hmm. yeah two to five years you know or uh, one to three I feel like I heard one to three like in the beginning and oh, then like we were yeah. yeah we were told like one to three in the beginning and then like five years if you're like super lucky I would imagine like every day after five years you're like oh my gosh one more day oh my gosh one more day oh my god for seven and not a half really. like how cool. no not at all like we put that out of our mind like oh, I love it. um it's not that I or we were like no this isn't gonna happen but kind of <laughs> yeah hey like, like put it out of our mind because yeah. like if you do live in that way then you're not truly like like you're not truly yeah. living sitting yeah. there like every day. day you're just in anxiety of yeah this is yeah. the last day yeah oh I can yeah. imagine I love that you were able to do that I mean I feel like me myself when I think of that putting myself in your shoes I feel like I would just be so anxious all the time so I love that y'all were able to be like you know what we're gonna live the best life we can I yeah think that's admirable for sure yeah, we got, I mean, we were like from the get go, you know, like at the hospital, like, you know, we were overloaded with that all the time. So like yeah. given, you know, dates and times and surgeries and life expectancy and all that. And like, I think it just came to a point, like when like the surgeries kind of slowed down that it was like, you know, we're just going to live our life, you know, obviously in the back of our mind, we knew what he had, you know, sure. we knew that as he got older and he, and he surpassed some of these dates, like you know, things maybe got harder, or some of the neurological stuff kind of caught up with them. But that that didn't stop us from going out and doing the stuff and, and trying to live our best. And so like, yeah, that definitely wasn't easy. It wasn't just like, you know, a switch that we were able to turn off. And, you know, it took time to realize like, okay, what can we do for him to live his best life? But like, what can we do as a family to live our best life? Like, we're all doing this, like, trying to not just, you know, be you know, him being that diagnosis and that's it. Like he was so much more than that. And he lived, you know, an amazing seven and a half years and like we did too. And mm -hmm. so that's yeah. all to him. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Now we talked about earlier, they told you he wouldn't be able to walk or talk or meet all these milestones. Was he able to verbalize anything to you guys? Or was it just that smile that you knew? Just a smile. Yeah. yeah. He would laugh and, and smile. Um, you know, obviously you know, he'd be upset and we would yeah. know that. Um, yeah, he was not able to walk, uh, talk. He wasn't able to sit up. Um, and so, um, yeah, you could tell he definitely will let you know what he liked and what he didn't like, but yeah, yeah he never, he yeah. never spoke. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Those facial expressions, 
they spoke a lot though i mean that grin was huge and when he wasn't grinning he wasn't grinning so no, you tell me yeah. Love. Yeah. I, love it. I love it okay if people were to take away one thing from leah's journey this is a this is a vague question but what would it be so if people were hopping on here what's the one thing you think that should take away um let's see maybe i'll answer this one uh embrace the unexpected and just kind of see where it goes, like embrace it in a form of like with some curiosity versus the fear and overwhelm. Um, be open to new things like adventure and also like fun and play, like prioritizing those amidst the hard stuff, because that is truly what brought us through the dark days, right? Like it wasn't always hikes and smiles and joy and a blast out doing whatever we wanted to be doing there were hard times and having those little fun things to like regularly lean on whatever whatever brings little bits of joy um yeah I think like you know we we kind of had this idea of what life was going to be like, you know, when we got pregnant and, you know, we were waiting for Leo to come and, um, you know, that changed in a second. And so like, yeah, em embracing that change. I mean, he just unlocked something in us that like, you had mentioned this earlier, like we would have never been like that, you know, without Leo, like he just opened up something that like, you know, this, this passion for, you know, being outdoors and adventuring and being silly and laughing and music and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, that's who we really were. And like, you know, this little guy unlocked all of that yeah. in us. And so like, that's passionate for us going forward is like, you know, helping people, you know, realize that his little journey, you know, was so much more and, and so, so much bigger than he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love yeah. that so much. Yeah, absolutely. I hope y'all can see. I know it is like a grieving process and it always will be. I mean, let's be let's be honest. Leo will always be a huge part and always be there for you guys. But I hope you take time to see the amazing difference that Leo has made. And I mentioned this earlier, this little 15 pound boy has changed the world. Millions of people have heard his story. He made y'all better people. He's making strangers better, better people. I think that is just so, so cool. Like we owe a lot to Leo. Yeah, I know it's making me like choked up. I I cried on the Good Morning America thing, so I didn't want to cry on this one. Hey, that's okay. Listen, tears um, are good. But yeah, like especially, I think it's just the times that we're in right now. Like, oh yeah, that the stuff that we did two three years ago is touching the hearts of because that wasn't really a priority of of what when we were out doing stuff we weren't like recording ourselves all the time and we weren't like taking pictures all the time like we would snap a couple of pictures and then keep going doing what we're doing and being in the moment and um we weren't real uh like we had our social media and stuff back then and connected with our friends back home and new friends and stuff but it wasn't like there wasn't a ton of effort going right. into that you weren't so like it, a social influencer no right. no and there's no like offense to any anyone who was oh, doing sure. that but it wasn't the most important thing to us you know and so now with all of the hurt and pain and just everything that's going on in the world it is just so beautiful to me that that leo can be helping in that yeah. way right yeah. like, and I think yeah. it's really cool you pointed out. I mean, this has been two years ago that all this happened. It's just like resurfacing. I think that's so cool. Yeah. And I think it's important to point out how cool is it that it happened in this timing? Because had you gotten this much attention while he was around, you might would have spent too much time staring at a phone or trying to document it. Yeah. But instead, you got to spend all your time looking at him and nature. I think that's really cool. A hundred percent for sure. That's <laughs> awesome. Ryan and Luann, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. it was great talking with you. Appreciate it has it. been such a oh, absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't I saw your story and I thought I have to have him on the podcast. So I really appreciate it. 
guys that are listening, you know how this works. So we're going to continue talking. You can listen to the extra questions on my Patreon. It is patreon.com slash Townsend T Music. That is how we keep this project continuing and how we keep it running. So hop on there, support local, keep this project and listen to the rest of this conversation. If not, we will see you next week. If you'd like to hear the rest of this interview, visit patreon.com slash Townsend T Music. And don't forget, you can also watch the interviews on our YouTube channel at Townsend T Music YouTube. Selena with Impact Coaching and Consulting is a certified life coach who helps women find harmony with their faith, family, and career. She offers a virtual goals workshop, mastermind group, and a one-on-one private coaching where she helps you identify your deepest purpose, develop a roadmap to reach tangible goals, and encourage you to overcome any obstacles along the way. Selena's worked with hundreds of business professionals throughout the United States, including small business owners, direct sales associates, chiropractors, financial advisors, real estate agents, doctors, professors, teachers, and many more. You can follow her at coach underscore Selena on Instagram and Impact Life Coaching on Facebook. You'll love the encouragement and the practical tips for finding harmony in your unique life. If you're looking to buy or sell, I have the perfect realty company for you. Clark & Co. Realty is located in the Benton, Bryant, Arkansas area. And they understand that buying or selling a home is more than just a transaction. It's a life-changing experience. That's why their team of highly seasoned real estate professionals is dedicated to providing exceptional, personalized services for all their clients. They truly take great pride in the relationships they build, and they always work relentlessly on the client's behalf to help them achieve their perfect real estate goals. They always have the client in mind, and I can speak firsthand when I say how reliable, trustworthy, and quick they were. When I was looking to buy my first home, they were there with me every step of the way, answering every question I could think of. They showed me a great amount of knowledge and patience through the process. It's no wonder they've won so many awards for their outstanding services and their excellent relationships with clients. So if you're looking to buy or sell, there is no better option than Clark & Co Realty.